I was convinced that I actually filmed the intro to this and then the camera just switched off and I realized it uh, must have not recorded which is rather annoying but anyways as I'm as I already have started I will talk you through so basically uh, uh, this is the first time that I'm creating art since I am back from my holidays and I decided to film this process in case um, some of you feel similar in the sense that you know for whatever reason life or kids or some issues we have or work related whatever it is sometimes we wish we could do art but it just doesn't happen and to me it happened this summer which i was convinced i will have some time for arting but it didn't happen so i want to get back to my art creations as quickly as possible because the longer you wait the more awkward I find it personally so I'm just going to do that and for um, that inspiration I'm going to use this book and this book is great uh, it's called the watercolor ideas book by Joanna Gross all the links will be provided below um, so basically it's just full of ideas and I just wanted to show you that if you have those kind of days how easy it can be to just grab or force yourself even to grab a brush even if you're not feeling it or for whatever reason and just start creating so here I got inspired by her pattern it almost looks like a fabric design and I thought that looks really rather lovely so I'm going to do that um, the paper I'm using is the Tamoy River the white color and the 52 GSM for the brush I'm using the silver black velvet in uh, four round and I'm just going for it I'm not really as you can see, I haven't drawn anything beforehand. I'm just kind of freehanding it and enjoying the process. Just try to be um, in the moment and not really force yourself. How should I say? You should force yourself to do art if you haven't done it in a while because the longer you wait, the harder it will be. I'm going to leave it at that for now and now I'm going to go into these uh, purples so I decided to do purple these two purples and that that orange that I've just done so for this purple I'm going to go is it this one I think so and I'm just trying to think what blooms I would like maybe just some round ones like that just kind of swirling my brush around it could be maybe you know like little roses or whatever it is it could end up looking not so great that's also uh, a very realistic risk I'm taking but I'm just going for it because sometimes even if you create something that doesn't look great at least you got yourself out of that not doing anything art related you know it's better to do something that's not great than nothing at all I find because one way or another you'll you'll get to the good art so I'm just thinking let's try maybe something else like I'm going to create these buds actually like so so 
So what I can see here is that there is some glazing going on and essentially I'm just drawing in these flowers. I will dry it quickly and then I will go in with the other. Maybe I'll use some of this pinky color also for some flowers like so. I'm now just filling in the gaps where I see larger gaps between the flowers like that. At the minute it doesn't look that pretty I have to say but let's see what will happen afterwards. So now I'm going to quickly actually I like this red here underneath so I'm just going to take this red and mix it up with the orange a little bit just to make it kind of in between orange and red and that looks rather nice and I'm just going to create these foliage kind of things I'm not really entirely sure what this is I'm just going to go with that there's some just a little bit of like floral suggestion and I think adding a little bit of red was a good idea but just want some water into here like that and maybe actually add some of these flowers like that couple of petals so it's not really entirely looking like a flower but we'll see um, Maybe I didn't pick the easiest thing to work on, but that's okay. So I will um, actually touch in some of the areas where it's still wet, just to get the color flowing into the other flowers. I think that also would look quite pretty. And then um, I'll decide on the glazing color. So this one here. Okay, so as always the memory stick got full and I don't know at which point so I'm just going to continue. Basically I've been working on the flowers and connecting some of them onto still wet watercolour and um, just for an extra interest. Now I'm going to dry it and then I will do some glazing. All right, so now we have done that. I'm also going to start adding the green and the green I quite like in my palette, to be honest with you, is these two greens. They're quite bright, but I do like them. So I'm going to start uh, kind of like connecting Um, I hope you can see actually I'm going to zoom you in a little bit more because I find it it's quite quite a nice sort of change adding a little different color now and starting to add the foliage so the idea here is to fill up the page as much as possible so that it's a almost like a not really continuous um, pattern because if you would connect it it wouldn't really continue forever but you know it's definitely filling the page that's the idea so once I've added this lovely green I'm going to go now into the green next to it which is this green right here and I believe it's the 
it the sub green? No, it's the yellow green maybe. Anyway, so now I'm going to start um, just doing maybe other shapes. And let's see, so we've got these purples. I'm going to do a little bit more messy this time and also overlap some of them like that. And I think this is when things really pick up now. For this technique, make sure that your watercolor is transparent. So I've done all the purples. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and do some darker greens now actually. So now these are going to go like that and definitely overlapping them. So here is a good spot because there's nothing there. Really making sure there's not much white of the paper left. So I'm going to go this way for that reason. And then this one here, and this one here. It is a lot of fun, you should definitely try this technique. So, what we have left now is just these pink little flowers. And I'm thinking whether I should go for even more different. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go for this. I believe it's the perlin green, so it's a very dark color, almost looks black, so make sure you don't use water it out nicely. And uh, that one is now going to go like this and overlap a few things. Okay, I think this is it now, and it's looking quite nice to me. The colors are very pretty, very kind of luscious, but there's a little bit of white paper here. I don't know whether I should leave it or not. Yeah, I think I'll leave it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and grab a black pen. In this case, it's the Zebra... Uh, sorry, I can't read anything else. It's this brush pen. And I'm going to go ahead and just... do these centers of the flowers. And because it's a brush pen, I can create different thicknesses uh, inside the flower. I hope you can see. So I can play around a little bit and don't need to, um, you know, change nibs or different um, to different pans, if that makes sense. So I can just kind of uh, press a little bit more on the brush and that will create a thicker line and then vice versa. Just barely touching it will create a smaller, smaller mark. So that's what I'm doing. And then also a couple of them into these centers. Then maybe just a few into the purples. That kind of will bring out the flowers a little bit more. Um, just give them some detail. You can see now how fine I can make the line strokes. Looks really pretty actually. And got that, this one. So it really, when you don't see the flower, this little detail kind of helps 
um, your eye to catch the different flowers so differentiate with them so I'm just going to with with these ones just create a little bit of a thicker one like that and then let's see purples almost done then we have these round purples and I'm just thinking whether I should just do those a little bit more horizontal like so whether that would do anything interesting so just try it really like that and we're pretty much there I think So that brought the flowers out. You could continue maybe pulling out certain other images, but I'm happy. I filled a page with lovely florals. It actually makes me quite happy, the color combination. Very vibrant, very, um, you know, bright and, and all of that. I'm just thinking these red ones. I'd love to give them something. So I'm just going to give them these longer ones maybe very wispy maybe actually a couple more yeah that looks nice I think the fun bit about this exercise is the overlapping which you tend not to do generally as a rule but here you can totally go for it and I think this is exactly what makes it so much fun okay so now I'm definitely happy with the result there we go so this pen is fantastic for this type of work where you can really get the thinnest and wispiest um, little things actually as I'm speaking to you or talking to you I figured out I just want to add a few of these details just on the pink flowers like that you see sometimes that can happen when you feel like you just need to add a little bit of something and sometimes it just yeah need to give yourself a little time and um, you'll see if you need to fill in anything really so and just be consistent whatever flower you pick to do it do it sort of everywhere around that's it I can't see any more pinks okay here we go so I hope you enjoyed this and it inspired you to create a little fun page of florals which looks very summery and bright and happy and that is it for today thanks for watching and see you soon